Welcome to Come Follow Me. Today we're going to talk about the Doctrine and Covenants, section 93. Let's take a minute. Let's talk about truth. 9324 gives us the definition that the Lord uses for truth. Truth is, everybody say this, knowledge, knowledge of, of things, things as they are, as they were, and as they are to come. Let's memorize that. Let's remember what is truth. We live in a world where truth is very confused. A little and wishy-washy. Wishy-washy and vague. And so... We, oh, and changes depending on um, what you believe. Right. That's how the world is currently defining it. The Lord says, as they are, as they were, and as they are to come. Remember, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we want to be careful with what we take in as true. And you guys have had experiences with this in church classes and things you've heard people say. So I want to talk a little bit about those things and how is it that we refute? Because there is an absolute truth. There are moral absolutes. It's not a sliding scale, uh, you know, as opposed to our, our what we currently call political correctness. Well, I want to say the right thing and, and say the right words, don't want to offend anybody, but we have to stand on that line of truth. So what are some of the experiences you've had with this sliding scale that seems to be used by the world, but is not how the Lord would do it? What are some of your experiences? Well, in the scriptures, we see, we are taught that like our parents are to be our teachers right. in many things. Right. And then I would go somewhere like seminary and they'd be like, oh, yeah, ask, ask your questions here. This is where you're supposed to ask them. And I'm like, wait, that doesn't seem right. Okay. I mean... When the, sometimes the kids were asking like really important questions that I felt probably would have been better answered by a parent than by fellow class members. Okay. So kind of the truth of a family uh, dynamic mm -hmm. is perhaps being shifted. Where should we turn for answers instead of parents, grandparents, that family circle turning to so-called experts, whether it's a seminary teacher, school teacher, doctor, whatever, right? Any kind of a leader, a bishop. Not that those are necessarily bad things, but that they should be the backup to the parents, not the replacement of the parents. They're supposed to turn you to your parents. That's right. As a young women's leader, and I learned this from my own mother, I felt like it was very vital when I served in that organization that nothing that I did or said should turn them away from parents who have that responsibility. As a mother, I know I answer to my Heavenly Father for what you don't learn or what you do learn. I have to teach. And so that is a great truth. And if we're not careful, we set ourselves up to be an expert in place of a parent who should be the one that a child turns to, right? And no matter how old I get, I still turn to my mom. So and I would turn to my dad, but he's on the other side. He's harder to talk to. <laughs> so, but my parents, that would be where I would look to for that moral compass, for those absolute truths. Yes, Catherine. I remember you would sometimes go and talk to grandma to like to ask a question about something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She's a very great resource to me. I have great respect for my mother who she is and what she's done in life and the things that she's learned. I often tell people she's probably the smartest person I know, knows more than almost anybody I know with a high school education. I know doctors, I know nurses, I know lawyers, I know, and yet she is one of the smartest people I know because she is constantly seeking knowledge and truth. She is always reading and she's in her scriptures because she wants to know the truth. And that's important. Now, Emma, you've talked about sometimes being in classes. You've talked about an instance. One of the things I remember in a class, it was a Sunday class, and one of the teachers was talking about priesthood, and he described it as a superpower. 
which that wasn't right, and I knew it wasn't. And at that time, I didn't know how to defend that line of truth. So will you always know what to say when you hear something that isn't true? No. You mm -hmm. won't, right? But it's good for your heart and your mind to go, something's wrong with that. Why? Why is that important to recognize? Because then you're not deceived. Yes, and then you can be pondering over it. What was wrong with that? And so then you take that time, and I think you came home and we talked about it a little bit. One of the things we've identified in our own home is that as much as we might, people might like superhero movies, right? We all want someone to save us. When we're looking for a superhero to save us or to save the world, who are we turning against? The Savior. The Savior, who is our true hero, who is the one who's actually supposed to, well, see, his name is Savior, who is the one who's supposed to save the world? Okay, so if you're watching <laughs> and you love superhero movies, I just killed a sacred cow. Sorry, but I'm not sorry because <laughs> we have to be careful what we believe. We have to be careful what we put in. And so those things are very, very vital. The truth is unchangeable, just like the Savior is unchangeable, just like our Heavenly Father is unchangeable. Truth is truth. And you've said it this often. There's not my truth. Yeah. There's not your truth, his truth, her truth. There's just one truth. We get into this mindset. It gets mixed up with this. Sometimes people figure things out different ways to get mm -hmm. to truth, right? And then we like to believe that there's different truths. And it's like a dangerous little mm -hmm. rocking back and forth. Obviously, we learn things different ways. That's like that doesn't mean what you did was wrong or what I did was wrong to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there was one truth all along. Right, right. And Heavenly Father recognizes that what we're trying to have is that fullness of truth, not just part of the truth. The fullness is what allows us to go and be where he is. And he is the one who teaches that. And truth allows us to have agency. That is vital. Truth allows for agency. When you don't have the ability to know the difference between right and wrong or truth and error, how can you make a good choice? A good choice, true agency, requires knowledge. Truth. And he says here, that this light, this truth, herein is the condemnation of man because that which was from the beginning is plainly manifest unto them and they receive it not. And so if we don't receive that light and that truth, we place ourselves in a position of condemnation because it's here, it's here for us to receive and just because you don't choose to learn it or read it or live it doesn't mean it's not there. And because it's here, we have a responsibility to learn it and act on it. You know, one of the things I realized with truth is because Jesus Christ is the truth mm -hmm. and he's unchanging. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like we kind of disconnect that. Right. Truth is truth because Jesus Christ is the truth. And Jesus Christ, you know, God doesn't change, mm -hmm. never will. And he just, it won't happen. And so the truth will always just be the same. Right. Same today, yesterday, today, and forever. Right. So very, very vital that we don't get confused by that. If you've liked our videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Also, find and follow us on Facebook.